Jean Samuel in Montreal, Canada writes to me, Paul, thank you for your videos. My pleasure, sir. Uh, they've been helping me getting the best out of my system without ingesting too much snake oil. <laughs> I've been oiling my snakes. <laughs> my question is, if an audio file is a transcription of a sine wave, how can I hear the bass, the drum, the guitar, all at the same time? It doesn't make sense to me that the sine wave couldn't just work with one frequency at a time. Merci beaucoup. Jean Samuel. How's that? Well, I sound like I'm a Frenchman, don't I? <laughs> All right. Well, first off, the assumption that you have made that we're just producing sine waves is, I don't want to say inaccurate, so I won't say that. It is um, not complete enough. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Yes, we produce sine waves, but we also produce triangle waves and square waves. And yes, it's true, a square wave is a whole bunch of sine waves, right? But if you think about it, a transducer, the drivers here or in the woofers or whatever, they can produce a sine wave. So let's just take it a simple sine wave. And what happens? So a sine wave we know goes like this. It looks like a rolling ocean, right? Up, down, up, down, like that, in and out, in and out. And it's going from zero plus, nice and smooth, back through zero, where no movement at all, and then it goes in the opposite direction. So as the sine wave goes, this diaphragm is pushing out, and then as it goes in, it's sucking back in. So it's pushing out, sucking back in, in a very nice, clean way. As that's doing it, let's say now we're going to introduce a second sine wave. And this first sine wave is going at 100 times a second. Now we're going to introduce one that does 1,000 times a second. What happens? Well, the driver doesn't know. So it's moving in and out 1,000 times a second. But at the same time, it has now a little different movement, okay? So maybe the easiest way, I, I think sometimes where the confusion comes into is how does it do two things at once? Well, the answer is it doesn't, okay? When we take a thousand cycle sine wave and we add in a hundred cycle sine wave, we get a complex waveform, okay? It isn't two separate things. They add together. And so all of a sudden now, maybe it, I, I, I probably should have had a dry, well, I'm trying to do these without, you know, I know people get all pissy with me because why don't you do drawings? And, and maybe I'll go back to it. But I have found that if I can't explain it with words, it may not be worth talking about because many times, as an engineer, I get nerded out, and then I start doing these waveforms, and then people go, whoa, I don't know what he's talking about. And I don't want to get into that. I mean, these I do these to help you understand, and I want everyone to sort of get it. So forgive me for not drawing. But a complex waveform is developed that no longer looks like a simple sine wave. Now the sine wave is doing this. It's, it's moving in and out, up and down. So as the, as the 100 hertz waveform is rising up, now we have 10 times more things going whoop, whoop, whoop. So it, you get this rise with wiggles. So it's rising and wiggling at the same time. And that just makes a new waveform. And the speaker doesn't care. The speaker just says, eh, all right, boss, within the frequency area that I can handle, you just tell me how you want me to wiggle back and forth. Fast, slow, I don't care. It just, it's just moving back and forth, reproducing that complex waveform. So if, you, if you're really curious, go on to Wikipedia and just look up what a musical wave looks like. And you'll see it does not look like a sine wave. It looks like this jumbled, jaggedy thing. And that's because 
All those sine waves added together make a complex waveform which is easy for a speaker to reproduce. Okay? Hope that helps. Thanks for the question.